Hey plant friends, it's Krista with Botanical Bird and this week I want to talk about a couple of plant genus that I am just not great at caring for. I at least hope it's not just me, but I feel like we all have those plants where no matter how hard we try, they just don't like us and that's okay. <laughs> and I think that's one of the beautiful things about plants is that it can kind of help us learn to accept the things we cannot change. And also, I mean, in the same light, we can improve our ability to care for certain plants if we do more research and figure it out through trial and error too. <laughs> but no matter how hard I trial and or error with these plants, I just don't seem to get it right. So come along with me. The first plant genus that I wanna talk about is Peperomia. And here I have this Peperomia obtusifolia variegata, or a marble peperomia, I think, marble peperomia obtusifolia, and it used to be much more magnificent. It might look kind of okay, like the leaves it does have might look okay now, but it's kind of just like lost a lot of its luster, a bunch of leaves have rotted, and so it's just not what it used to be in all of its glory. And then what's happened with this peperomia piccolo banda it has happened with many of my peperomias that have like the thin stems with the very circular leaves is they will just fall off until there's like nothing left and I will propagate the leaves and then when I'm propagating they seem to be doing pretty well like I think I'm just better at propagating this type of peperomia than I am at having the actual adult peperomia. And so I'm just gonna roll with it. I've tried to then like wean it off of its propagation training wheels, like taking it out of the humidity bag, potting it in like an adult pot or um, just giving it a cover pot. And then it once again starts dying. So I guess I'm just in a perpetual phase of propagation with them. This Piccolo Banda is a great example. The propagation stage is doing great. Like look at all those great little leaves. But if I try to move on from here, it won't go well. I also have another example of this with this Peperomia Rana Verde. So it used to have leaves this size that were kind of like all standing up straight. You can see they're yellowing now, but that's okay because soon enough I will take these leaves off without causing any damage and then just leave these little baby ones to fend for their own. No, <laughs> same thing of the little baby propagated leaves are doing great, but I'm worried to try to take it any further than that. So first genus that I'm just not great with is Peperomia. All right, next I'd like to talk about Alocasia, like this Alocasia odora variegata. So you can see it's just one little shrimpy leaf and it has this giant, I don't even know what this is. I just don't think I'm supposed to bury it. It's like the thickest part of the stem of the plant, but like roots aren't really coming off of it. At one point they were, but I was told when you pot it not to pot that part. I don't know. This used to be a magnificent plant with many leaves. This one was like the smallest leaf it had. And I think just because it was so highly variegated that all the leaves ended up wilting and dying. But me not having that much experience with highly variegated leaves before, I thought something was wrong. And so I kept changing the care I was giving it. And I think that ultimately just made it worse. And so all it's had for a long time is this single leaf and I'm like refusing to give up on it. I feel there's those two types of plant parents, like one, someone who will stick with a plant until it's way past dead and they're like, I can make it happen. And then there's those of us who are like, oh, there's a, there's a wilted leaf, gotta throw it away. And I feel like I tend more towards the latter. <laughs> and so I'm trying to change because I pay good money for these plants and I give them lots of love and time. And so I want to see them flourish. So this is kind of like par for the course for me with alocasia. Other alocasia that I've had, usually the leaves will one by one start to yellow and then kind of like wilt. And I don't know if it's thrips or if it's a different kind of pest. I have an alocasia regal shield, a big one. And that one I know has thrips that I'm currently battling. So far it seems like I'm winning. I tried neem oil and that I think just made them stronger somehow. So now I'm doing the whole water alcohol dish soap mixture and I think I'm kicking their little butts. So fingers crossed. The best alocasia I have right now, other than probably that regal shield, the one I've had the longest thus far without it completely dying is this alocasia freidic. And it's kind of 
all over the place, but I've lost some leaves. It's grown some leaves. And so I'm pretty, pretty content with it. This also is getting thrips. I've just, my plants have just been ravaged by thrips lately. And I believe I also, or I'm almost done exterminating them. I'm like keeping it in quarantine just in case, but I've been spraying it as well. So I'm actually like winning some of these thrip battles, which I didn't think was possible. So I'm pretty proud. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay, next I wanna talk about Aglionema. And I feel like a lot of these plants have the stereotype of being easy or low maintenance or minimal care. And I kind of hate those stereotypes because if you struggle with them, then it makes you feel like you're a bad plant parent. And I would like to think that that's not true. It's just we all have different strengths and areas for growth right? <laughs> and so Aglionema is one of them for me. I feel like there's just so many that I really like. Like I had this Aglionema Maria for a long time. It was big and lush and it didn't require too much light and I wasn't watering it all that often. And then all of a sudden when I moved, it just like stopped doing well. And I assumed it was from lack of light, but I don't know. I have this guy, which is either an Aglionema Maria or a cutlass or a tigress i never know if you do know please put it in the comments and this is kind of like what aglionema do for me and i'm wondering if i'm not watering it enough and or i'm potting it in soil that's too well draining i tend to like to pot my tropical plants in super well draining soil and allow the soil to dry out completely before watering and that's i feel like that's usually works for me i don't know that it works for these plants <laughs> this is usually what it does for me the leaves will start to curl they'll yellow and then I pick them off. I guess I'll try watering more, which kind of scares me because I know overwatering is like the number one death sentence for most house, house plants. Okay, for Diffenbachia, I don't actually currently have any that look like they're dying. I only have one right now that I still have that hasn't died and it doesn't look like it's going to die, fingers crossed. So it wouldn't be a good example to show you. But kind of like the Aglionema, the leaves will just start to curl and they'll yellow and then I pick them off. And I have, I'm assuming none of these plants it's because of lack of light because I have all of them under grow lights or with like a fair amount of natural light. So I don't think that could be the issue with any of these. I'm assuming it's not. So I don't know, I've kind of stepped up my grow light game as of late, so I'm hoping that's not a problem. But some of these, I'm kind of just like chalking it up to like mystery pest. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll wipe the leaves of some of my plants, like the one Diffenbachia that I still do have. And I feel like I get a fair amount of dust off of them. So I'm hoping that I'm wiping off any possible pest eggs too. There's not a great fix for me, especially with Diffenbachia. I feel like I struggle with quite a bit. I don't know if it's like spider mites that I'm not looking for carefully enough. I'm not quite sure. Diffenbachia has another like mystery. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> All right, so I saved this one for last because I feel like it is the most hard to relate to. I feel like there's gonna be so many people like, how can you not take care of this plant? It's definitely like the hallmark. This is an easy care plant. And for me, it's not. I'm just gonna build the anticipation here. I think all of my plants of this specific genus that I've had have all gotten thrips. So maybe this is all, most of these are just a case of I need to do better pest prevention rather than having to deal with plants after they already have a pest issue. But I wanna like this plant because so many people like are able to have a lot of them and they're doing great and mine just never have. So let me just bring in the plant already. Yep. I said it everyone, no plant shaming. It's my Monstera Deliciosa. And honestly, it looks okay right now, at least in this video. But if you look at a lot of the leaves are kind of wilted. I've never really gotten my leaves to hold their, their form very well. This one definitely has untreated thrips. I've been very reluctant to start treating it just because I know I'm kind of like, what's the point? My first Monstera Deliciosa, I saw that it was deteriorating. I started to try to treat it didn't go very well. So I ended up trashing it because I think it got sunburned eventually too. And so I took a cutting and it propagated so well and I was so in love with it. And then it started to do the whole thing again where I didn't see any thrips, but it started looking like the leaves were yellowing a bit. They were starting to curl in. And so I just quit. <laughs> and I've been been um, putting off trying to treat this plant because I kind of feel like it's just gonna happen again. Try not to hate me, but I'm not a huge fan of Monstera. I want to like them. I think they're very pretty. I think they fall into that stereotype of being super easy to care for, 
but for me, they're not, and that's okay, and maybe I just don't need to have Monstera. <laughs> I bet you I super fooled you telling you that that would be the last plant I talked about. But after I finished filming that, I thought of another plant genus that didn't even occur to me because I haven't had it for so long because every single last one of them that I had died. <laughs> and that is the glorious fern. <laughs> I started out with two rather large Boston ferns at the first apartment I had here in Texas, and they were doing so well. They were out on a balcony, they were getting tons of light, I was watering them all the time. And then when I moved, hi Lito, he's here. I don't know if you can see him, maybe he'll come on camera. Oh, there's his ear. Then when I moved, they started to, oh, I moved into an apartment that had more intense direct light. My apartment faced west, and so when I put them on the balcony that faced west, it just got way too direct of light, and so the leaves like burnt, and I tried to make it this little shade thing, didn't help, and so I brought them inside, and they just burnt to a crisp, and I, I think I probably was underwatering them, knowing ferns. <laughs> I was probably underwatering them. And so I got rid of those. And then I tried a bird's nest fern and I made sure not to water it in the middle because we all know it's gonna like make the core rot. But something ended up, maybe I overwatered that one. The leaves yellowed a lot. And then I made the dumb, dumb decision of thinking, <laughs> I can take care of a maiden hair fern. I can water it every day, it's fine. And even when I did water it every day or every other day, it was not fine. It always, the leaves always ended up yellowing and I was always chopping off stems to make it look better. So there were fewer stems, but they weren't as gross. It just never worked. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna take what I learned from this experience and get another maiden hair fern and do it better and I didn't, I didn't do it better. And so I just told myself, fern are not for me, they're just not, and that's okay. I don't even have any to show you of how they're dying because I stopped getting them months and months ago. And I think it's okay just to know that there are certain genus that are just not for you. And I definitely believe in improving your plant care game and like learning about those genus if you wanna have them. But I also think there's no shame in saying that you are just not great friends with that genus and it doesn't reflect on you as a plant parent. All right, so what kinds of plants or plant genus do you struggle with? Please feel free to put them in the comments below. Or if you have any friendly suggestions for me with these plants, I would love to hear them. I'm always trying to learn and grow with y'all. So I appreciate any feedback that y'all have. And if you liked this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Botanical Bird, and bird has a U in it, not an I. And follow my planty Instagram, which is at botanical underscore bird. And remember, I'm rooting for you. Bye.